So the spring is compressed by an amount of 80 millimeters and the system is released from rest. Determine the power supplied by the spring to the four kilogram cart. We have three situations to consider. Just after release, as the cart passes the position for which the spring is compressed by an amount of uh, sigma 2, so half the initial, and also as the cart passes the equilibrium position, so when the spring is not compressed at all. So since this question is asking us about power, um, what we can start with is our power equation. And by definition, we know that power is equal to the derivative of energy with respect to time. So if we are to um, substitute out the total energy and put in each of the different types that make it up, we're going to have that it's equal to the derivative of kinetic energy, the derivative of potential energy due to gravity, and also the derivative of spring potential. All right, so rereading the question, it asks us to determine the power supplied by the spring. So that's going to be this final term here. All right, this is power supplied by spring. So that's the only um, term of interest um, in terms of what the question actually wants us to find. So let's just pick that part out. I'm just going to scroll up here. So I'm going to call it P spring. And we're going to say it's equal to just the derivative of the spring potential. So I can replace the spring um, potential energy with a half kx squared. And I know I'm going to have to take the derivative of this with respect to time. All right. So if I just rewrite this quickly, we know that a half and a k, they're going to be constant at all times. It's only going to be x, the spring deflection, which is going to change. All right. So all we need to do is take the derivative of this part here. So it's going to be a half k multiplied by, now it's just a chain rule, so top number multiplied by front number, so 2 times 1 is 2. Write down your variable, and it's going to be to the power of 2 minus 1, which is 1. And then we need to multiply by the derivative of the variable itself. So the derivative of x is x dot. So from there, we can do a bit of cancelling. So the half is going to cancel with the 2, and we find that the power delivered by the spring is equal to k, the spring constant, x, the displacement, and x dot. All right. And thinking about it in terms of the question, x dot is going to be the velocity of the spring end. Okay. So the velocity that this um, spring end is going to be going at is going to be equal to the velocity of the box itself since they're attached. So I'm just going to call this V. So we can rewrite this equation as KXV. So we just need to calculate what that is at each of the three different scenarios. So for part A, we're asked what happens the instant after release. So thinking about it, if we roll back up here, it tells us that the system is released from rest. So initially, it's going to have zero velocity. Okay, so V is zero meters per second. So if we want to calculate the power delivered by the spring, it's going to be equal to KXV, where V is equal to zero. So the answer is going to be that at the instant after release, power due to the spring is zero watts. So for part B, we're asked to find what happens when the spring is at half of its initial compression. So it started at 80 from above. So we're asked what happens when the spring compression is just 40 millimeters. So again, we have our equation where P spring is equal to kxv. So this time we know what the spring constant is. Um, it was given in the, in the question. 
um, x is 40, we need to find what the velocity is. It's not going to be zero this time. It is going to be moving. So for that, we can use our work energy equation. So scrolling up, we need to find v. And we're going to do that using that the change in energy has to be equal to the work applied minus the work lost. So the change in energy, I'm going to consider what happens between our initial point where the spring is compressed 80 millimetres and it's not moving um, compared to our final point, which is when it's compressed 40 millimetres. So work applied only has it, uh, is not zero um, when you have something extra acting on the system. So we don't have that. We have no extra energy being added. So this is going to be zero. And I'm not going to consider friction um, or air resistance or any other type of loss, something that could take away energy from our system. So that's also going to be zero. So we have that the final energy minus the initial has to equal zero, or it's conservation of energy. So whatever we have at the beginning, we have to have at the end. So thinking about the initial, it can be made up of kinetic energy, potential energy due to gravity, and potential energy due to the spring. So we've just discussed that at the beginning it's released from rest, which means there's going to be no kinetic energy in our system. Potential energy due to gravity, remember that's relative to your reference point. So if I just scroll back up here, if I make my reference point in line with the block, that means that I'm going to have no potential energy um, in this situation relative to that reference. So that means that I can dump this one here. And all that I'm going to be left with is my um, spring energy, which is a half kx squared. So I can work that out. Up in the question, it tells me that my spring constant is 3,500 newton meters, newtons per meter, I should say. And x is how much it's being compressed. And in meters, it's 0 0.08. So I find that I have 11.2 joules. So now I just need to do the same thing for the final position. And again, I start off with the three types of energy that I might have. So this time in my final position, I'm trying to find what the velocity actually is. So that means I am going to have kinetic energy and it's going to be a half mv squared. Potential energy due to gravity, it's going to be zero again because in the final position, all that's going to have happened is that my block here is going to have moved, you know, it's going to have moved to the right, I guess, um, on this same flat piece of land. So it's going to have no height change, which means that it's also going to be in line with my zero height reference, so it's going to be zero. And this time I am also going to have potential energy due to the spring because it's been compressed 40 millimetres. So substituting in, um, we're told that our block is 4 kilograms and velocity is unknown. And again, we already know that our spring constant is 3,500 and we can pop in that it's going to be compressed half as much, so 0 0.04 this time. So this simplifies to be 2v squared plus 2.8. And all I need to do is then work out what my unknown is, um, which is this v, v in the uh, final um, equation. So we know that initial has to equal final. So 11.2 equals 2v squared plus 2.8. Solving for the velocity. It comes out to be 2.05 meters per second. So I can work out now what the power in my spring is going to be in this part B scenario. Remember that it was equal to kxv. So 3,500 multiplied by x, which was 0 0.04 in meters, and multiplied by 2.05, and it comes out to be 287 watts. So that's the answer for part B. So part C, it's as the cart passes equilibrium.
So if it's at the equilibrium position, that means that we're going to have no spring compression. So x is equal to 0. So remembering back, p spring is equal to kxv, and x is going to be 0. So although we do have a velocity at this point in time, it doesn't really matter because overall it's going to be supplying 0 watts again. So that's the answer to that question. Um, that's what I've got.